Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today, I want to show you another feature of a spectrum analyzer. So we've kind of looked at how you look at a signal, first of all, what the screen looks like, decibels, frequencies, instead of volts and current versus time. Instead of time domain like an oscilloscope, it's frequency domain. And instead of reading volts and current, even though we could do a linear uh, measurement, it's typically done in decibels, okay? So that way you can shrink uh, the screen so you can see, let's say you're, if in a city, for instance, big tall skyscrapers and little teeny people, you shrink them all together so you can see them both together in the same picture. So, you know, when you try to take a picture, you can't get the whole building in place, right? But if you kind of shrunk everything down, you could. So that's kind of what you're doing. Uh, you can see really small things and big things. So every 20 dBs is 10 times. So, yeah. So anyway, what I want to show you on this now is another really important feature. Now, some spectrum analyzers in the past, and even I'm sure today, you get real expensive spectrum analyzers. They'll come with, you, you buy a tracking generator along with your spectrum and sometimes they're included in inside them. Like today's oscilloscopes have generators built inside. Well, today's spectrum analyzers have tracking gener generators built inside. So this is our tracking generator output. And it's controlled by these buttons right here on the side. So uh, what we can do is essentially the same thing as a frequency response an analysis, like on um, the GWN stack where I've shown body plots, where up there when you're doing body plots, it's back in frequency domain. You're not doing time domain. You're seeing the frequencies across here, and you're uh, looking at decibels. So same thing as the spectrum, and you know it might send out a signal, say one volt, and then where it rolls off, you see it roll off, and you go, oh, there we go, low pass filter, or maybe a high pass filter. You see it come up, and then it puts out or band pass, it'd come up like this and back down. So with one of these things, we can do kind of, well, really the same thing, except for with a lot wider bandwidth, okay? And we can go a lot deeper because of the signal uh, sensitivities. So here's our tracking generator output and here's our input. I just have my 50 ohm cable right here. And uh, right now we're just looking at the noise floor Okay, so all I have to do, check this out. I hit my tracking generator, it's up here right now, okay? So I already had it up, and then it says off or on, I can hit it right here, or, and I can put the amplitude, how much signal I wanna put out, uh, but by default, it's uh, 28 dB M. So just hit it, now look at that, nice straight line. I don't have a filter in here or anything, so it's just giving me a straight line across there. Now what you might want to do is, so what you might want to do is, let's say you have some wiggles in here. It's not quite perfect. You're looking at a circuit and you're going to do it before and after. So you can normalize this so it's a straight bar and call that zero dBs. And then you put your filter in there and then uh, run this uh, scan again, and it'll be the difference between the normalized curve and what you get. So, just a quick video, just showing you that this thing does have a tracking generator, much like the GW Instec, the FRA, what they called it there, frequency response analysis. And uh, this is a very important thing for a spectrum analyzer. It injects a signal at the same time it reads the voltage. So it puts, you know, just scrolls across the screen and draws your waveform. So there you go. Hope you like that. Short, sweet. Just another very important aspect to a spectrum analyzer. And we're building, we got building blocks here. So now we can start looking at some signals, I think, right? Next video, we'll look at some cool signals. So. Let me know in the comments below. You guys have given me some good ideas. And um, yeah, can't wait to start that. So, all right, thanks for watching. And oh, 
Somebody's timing out on me. <laughs> As always, two thumbs up to my patrons. Appreciate you guys. And appreciate everybody for watching the videos. And there's a thank you button down below too. YouTube put that there. That's pretty cool of them. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.